Hi, my name is Megan and welcome to Round the Cauldron. Today I'm doing something that I haven't done in a while. Um, my last React video was to Freya Norling, but I am actually going to react to something that a couple of other people have. And I have mentioned thinking about reacting to this video and people were like, yeah, do it for sure. And I like watching react videos. So I figured why not? Maybe somebody else would like it too. Um, so today I am going to be watching a video by Sky Life called uh, Inside the Magical World of a Manifesting Witch. So this should be fun. I haven't watched this video yet. I saw Hearth do a uh, react to it, but I didn't click on it because I wanted to have like an authentic reaction to this video. So let's let's get started. <laughs> All I want to do is help people believe in magic because magic has changed and saved my life and given me everything. Believing in magic, even though it's the hardest choice you will ever make, is the most worth it. <laughs> the more I believed in magic, the better everything became. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> magic is real. Casual red Range Rover in the driveway. I wonder if that's her car. There she is. Hi. Hello. Come in. I just have to say that I love that she's wearing a witch hat. I think it's adorable. Good morning. Hi everyone. I'm Mia Magic. I'm a witch and an ambassador for modern magic. So you said you like manifested this house. I use magic to get everything that I have in my life. What manifestation means in, in its definition is to bring something into fruition or reality. Gold is the color of life, of abundance. So as you enter the house, everything here is gold. This is a honey jar spell. This is actually one of the best ways that... I like that you can see right away that she's got, you know, something as soon as you walk into her house that is magical for her. That's, you know, that's... Part of why I do what I do is to really let everybody know that it's not all, you know, it's not all uh, hidden behind mysticism. There is a way to live every day as magically as possible. That I manifest anything. You have yeah. a broomstick too. Yeah, this is my besom. Besom is the ancient word for the broomstick. How does your day normally start? Besom is an ancient word. Is it besom? I always pronounce it besom. I, I don't know. I just call it a broom. I don't know if it's an ancient word. I don't know where that comes from. With naked yoga right down there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How did you find this place? Magic. <laughs> we called the Priestess Palace and I just wanted to create a space where me and one or two sisters can just make magic and do ritual and be in our practice together. Yeah, I mean, we've had rage rituals in here. We've had sex magic rituals in here. We've had all the things in here. I don't want to experience rage ritual. Oh my God, yeah, you want sex to do a rage ritual? magic ritual? It's basically a pleasure circle with your sisters and you send the orgasmic energy up into the universe for the sake of manifestation. What? I'm gonna put you on the sound. That's interesting lounge too. We have a vibroacoustic haptic bed that you can put any binaural beat and it has four subwoofers in the bottom of it and it just like and so that's a big part of my morning routine. My most favorite magical tool is four subwoofers just channeling whatever frequency you want huh. right into yourselves. Let's see how she's doing. so good. It's like your whole body is. Mm. For me, being a witch means living. That would be an interesting, th interesting thing to try. I have done those like sensory deprivation tanks, which are a little different, but that I think, besides probably being like a really good massage, um, I think that would be interesting. 
from a state of wisdom that comes by cultivating a harmonious relationship with the natural world, with other people, with ourselves, and with whatever our word for source, divine, god, goddess, universe is. If you don't have a why that's aligned with the highest good of all, it's gonna be really hard to manifest what you want. But magic is manifestation. It's harnessing the forces and energies of the universe and being able to wield them in the direction of bringing your desire to fruition. I have witnessed being supported by magic. My first candle magic spell, I was like broke and I needed money and I made 12 grand the next day. What? I'd like to know exactly what she did because I would like to make 12 grand in one day. That seems kind of out there, but I'm not saying that it's not possible, but I would really like to know what she did. What is this? What's going on here? This is sort of like our masculine altar and then the golden side on the other side of the fireplace is more like the feminine. You'll see there's like an interesting relationship to balance. That's like a big thing, you know, everybody wants to know how you find a boy. One of the best ways to manifest love is to bring balance and symmetry into anything that you create. Yeah, so this is more like kind of my earth altar. So how we had the orchids over there, right? Super feminine, they look like pussies, they're like so beautiful. And then we have one masculine deer thing over here. It's like, okay, bringing the balance of the two sides. So then I made this, the wreath in the center, and then the two owl wings. This was actually the first pair of owl wings that I found. You found an owl? Yeah. You found a dead owl? Yeah, I find them all the time. <laughs> this is like finding owls left and right. This one's fresh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it still smells like a dead owl. But then, I found this. This is my fox. I found this on Christmas night in Humboldt. I went home, the goddess literally just animated my body and she just like scooped up this dead fox and so I like made the first cut and instantly I just remembered and I was like I've done this thousands of times before and then I just with my bare hands and a sharp knife just skinned her I just remembered how to do it and I didn't have another explanation other than past lives that's really interesting because that is a phenomenon that happens is someone just remembers how to do something or they all of a sudden know how to do something with no previous experience. And it could be divine intervention, it could be reliving past lives or just your past life experience coming back to help you in this. You didn't need to watch a how-to YouTube video on how to skin a fox. I, I was like, didn't. I can do this. Yeah. I'm Mia Magic, skinning yeah. the fox, this is yeah. what I do. I got all these people on Instagram are like, you know, vegans are like, how could you do that? I'm like, how could I do what? I found something dead and I'm honoring it, you right. know, and otherwise it would have just gotten ground and ground further and further into the pavement and no one would have ever been able to appreciate it. And one of the taglines of my work is bringing the ancient way to the modern day. Women used to do that all the time. You needed to like skin the animals, make the clothes, use the bones for needles. Nothing went to waste. As a little girl, I was completely immersed in worlds of fantasy. When I started going to public school, everyone was like, you're a loser and magic isn't real. And I started really believing all those things because I kept getting rejected. I had totally shut myself off from even the possibility that magic could be real. Then I was in an accident when I was 16 and I almost lost my arm. I needed so much help with everything. I couldn't put up my hair. I couldn't even get dressed by myself. And I just got angry. I made a series of other mistakes and kept hiding and running from my power and my magic. I was sleepwalking through my life pretending like everything that I believed in wasn't real, and I was miserable. I was living in a self-inflicted prison, and I fucking clawed my way out of there. It was like quicksand sometimes, and I would just fall back down, and I'd be like stuck and covered in muck and just like But I never stopped crawling and climbing. So you take a rest, and then you get back up and you keep going. And then we come downstairs, and then this is my room. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I had this so bed pretty. custom made, but then I painted it myself to make it green, right? Color of life, gold, abundance. And then I, I have really these willow like branches. The and these are actually room. my rage ritual branches. Willow represents peace and flexibility. And so I really love the energy of having willow branches to like release the anger. Should we do a little rage ritual? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> that is the best. Like, I need to get me a stick like that. Crystal grid the bed. And so I had only spheres on the feminine side and only obelisks on the masculine side. One month after I moved in here, I met Bear. Yeah, okay, that's very dualistic, very masculine versus feminine, bringing it all together. My entire right side of my bed with obelisks and then like someone whose symbol is an obelisk just like shows up. Yeah, yeah it was wild. <laughs> so these are petals, peonies and roses, flowers that are celebrations of something. You can always do magic that sort of amplifies that particular energy with those flower petals. Mm -hmm. Dragon's blood, incense, the my best. favorites. The best. Oh, that's moon blood. What is moon blood? Blood. Period blood? Uh-huh. What do you use it for? Everything. Magic to tell half the population that something that happens to them every single month is gross. That's a huge way that women have been disempowered. Instead of thinking it's gross or bad or weird, I honor it so much and now I don't get cramps and I don't get PMS and I don't have like any of the negative symptoms that are associated with your period and like, I love it. This also would be- That's interesting for me because I am a person that has not had a period in like eight months. And I have always wanted to get to a place where I could just be like, yes, this rocks, my period's awesome. I honor it as part of something that my body does, but my body just doesn't work that way. And while I do find it empowering for other people and I find it great that they can find it empowering, it's not something, I don't know, it's kind of something that I really had to give up on or give up the idea of because it's just not something that happens for me. And I'd be curious to know exactly what she uses it for because she just says everything. And that's kind of vague, but you know, her practice is her own. But it makes me really curious as to what exactly she uses it for. It'd be really good for you, Yoni Wand. Do you masturbate Yoni with that? Wand. I don't particularly use it like for pleasure. It's more for healing. But then you can masturbate with it. I mean, one of my girlfriends, the first time she used her obsidian wand, she had like nine orgasms. So I run a program called Witch School, and it's all about learning how to cultivate magic and wisdom within yourself. I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, usually spiritual entrepreneurs who wanna step more into their voice or their power or their magic. Mia gets out of the way and it's like, okay, what does their soul need? And my soul calls that in and uses me as a vessel for that message. I am literally a reflection of you that is what my whole business has been about. What's the most rewarding part about your work with people? That all of their dreams and goals can become reality and that I get to be a vessel for doing it themselves. I don't do it. And then at the end of three months, it's like every single goal that they had, every desire is accomplished. I really appreciate you because your ability to have a luxurious experience yeah. is part of your ability to serve. Yeah, as long as it's balanced with service. Exactly. If you're just spending your money on your lavish lifestyle, that's not an alignment. I've been doing a I like that she mentions service because she is in the public eye. She has a witch school. She is on YouTube and she's not just, you know, bringing all of this stuff into her life just because, I mean, maybe she's doing it just because she wants to, but she's balancing it out with being in service to others. And instead of being on the internet and saying, oh, you know, look what I can do, look what I can bring into my life, she's being like, look what I can do, now let me help you figure out how you can do it for yourself. Part of being online as a content creator in my opinion, this isn't necessarily going to hold true for every other content creator out there, is being of service to others. If I didn't want the questions or the criticisms or comments or just the discussions, I wouldn't be online. That makes zero sense because I'm online in the open where people can watch my videos and listen to my podcast and read what I write and they are free to form their own opinion whether they like me or not. And part of it is being of service to those that need that help that I can provide. So I really like that she also appreciates 
the surface aspect of it. It's, that's really important for me. But I mean, she can do whatever she wants with her magic, but I like that part. A lot of deep inner child work lately. And I sit in the chair where my mom would sit while I was in the hospital and read Harry Potter to me. And I tell that poor, sweet, lost little girl, this is not just a story, this is real. And let her believe, give her permission to believe because that was the darkest time of my life when I didn't believe in magic. When I kept myself from being who I'd always known I was. Our third sister has joined, yeah. Hannah. This is one of our witch sisters. Like we're talking about sex magic and like what is sex magic? So you can do, uh, yeah, uh, you can do sex uh, magic with the energy uh, of sexuality because sexual energy is the creative energy, right? It's what gives life, brings life. Yeah. So you can do sex magic without ever touching yourself. It's just like bringing that energy, that free flowing, being in pleasure, feeling the joy and the bliss and the openness. Something I intuitively have been doing before I was learning about anything when it comes to magic was, we already know what you're gonna say and we like it. <laughs> we fully approve. Like yes. whenever I would wanna get in the mindset of manifestation, I literally would masturbate and think about what I want. Duh. That's okay. That's like sex magic 101 using the energy, the sexual energy from masturbation or sex from, or sex with other people as a manifesting tool. G sex magic. Okay, so we're gonna keep going with our tune up. Mm. This is brain tonic. Yeah. Whoa, that's strong. Generally the breath that I do is just a connected breath and you just draw in really deep and then so. So it's like one, you're like sending it up out into the universe and the other, you're drawing it down from the universe and birthing it into your manifest reality. Mm -hmm. And so this is sex magic that we're doing without using sex. What's a particular manifestation that feels really important for you right now? More financial abundance. And what would be a symbol that would represent that to you? Gold. So when you reach your crown, just like picture everything gold. Oh, okay, so now I'll breathe. <sighs> Okay, I just need to stop this and say that I love and appreciate how Sky, I think their name is. I'm not sure if that's actually their name, but the, the, host, the host of this channel, I appreciate how they're not going in and just, you know, just talking with Mia Magic and the other person or other people that are here. Instead of just going and listening, they're taking an active part. And I think that is really important for someone who is genuinely curious about anything like this, is to not just listen, not just read about it, not just uh, speak to other people, but to take an active part in the exercises and the practices and the classes or whatever that someone else is offering that you're talking to. So I appreciate that she is willing to try this stuff on camera, basically, and it's something that she has no experience with. And she is not afraid to fail, and she's not afraid to, like I would be, look like a fool on the camera, because that is a deep shadow that I'm working on. But I really appreciate that she is taking an active part in this process and in this interview situation with Mia Magic. Ah. Ah. And then moving into your solar ah. plexus, the fire, the ah. will, the action. Ah. I feel like I'm intruding on a really personal thing right now. <laughs> and then bringing that up into your throat and making a sound, giving yourself permission to Speak more clearly, having that permission to show up as your highest self. Who are you when you live that golden light life? <laughs> Have all of your dreams manifest into reality. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What do you taste? Let yourself be crowned by this energy. And we draw this breath up and we build the energy and build it and build it until we see all of our dreams coming true and just raining down over us. Oh, <laughs>
<laughs> okay, I promise I was not laughing or smiling because I thought it was funny. It's a genuine thing that she's experiencing. And I it really, I can tell how personal it is. And I am just like, I felt like I was intruding on a super personal moment. But it makes me happy. And I can tell she's about to cry. <laughs> Because you get to have the opportunity to be responsible for creating your dream life, it does mean by nature of reality, you couldn't be able to create the things that you want without also creating the things that you don't want. And anytime you are a victim to anything, it is just an opportunity for you to become the victor. But we all. Mm, she kills me with that. I, I understand wanting to see like the good in really crappy situations. I get it. I've been through some really crappy things, but sometimes those things just happen and you can take the opportunity to rise above it. I don't know. That's just a that's just a thing for me. I, I don't think there's always a lesson in everything that goes wrong. Sometimes things just go wrong and sometimes things just suck. We'll have to awaken from this victim consciousness thinking that anything is being done to us when everything is being done for us, through us, and by us. This happened to me, but it didn't because I wouldn't be who I am without this having happened to me. Being ourselves is the one thing that we've never been told it's okay to be. So consider this your permission slip. Magic unfolds all around you as soon as you believe in it. Magic is real. What'd you guys think of the video? Like, comment, let us know what you thought. Honestly, my day with you changed my life. I am so grateful for you, so thank you for everything. And Mia has a magic school. Tell us about it. Tell the Vibe Tribe. So if you would like to join us in the wizarding world, learn how to be a witch, or just expand your magical powers, visit Mia Magic with a K. Just for all of you special Vibe Tribe members, I would love to offer you a 10% discount with the code SKY. Mia hooking it up for the Vibe Tribe. If you're trying to get your magic on, trying to learn all this stuff, to manifest the life of your dreams. Literally anything you want. You can have it, you can be it, you can do it, you can create it, and we're here to support you in remembering how. Hell yeah. Click the link in the description and love you guys so much. Remember, you have the power to thrive. You have the power to live your best life ever. Bless. So, I liked this video. I think it was cute. I think it's an accurate representation of how magic can be. I don't think it's an accurate representation of how everyone's magic is, and that's fine. Uh, but I think... 
that, I don't know, she enjoyed her experience, I enjoyed watching her experience, I have my reservations about which schools in general, not necessarily hers, but just things like that. Uh, that's my own personal opinion, I guess, about that. I think this was a great video. I think it was a great experience for her, and I love that she is open to these experiences, and she's open to the opportunities, and she's willing to listen. I feel like I'm not really good at these reaction videos because I, I don't know, like, what really was there to react to? It was great, and some of it was funny, and some of it was hard to watch. Um, because either it was just a super personal, intimate moment, or because I could really feel the emotion. Like when, when she's speaking about how being ourselves is being ourselves is something that we're not given permission to do, especially as female presenting people. We are told we have to be a certain way, and our power in basically every form has been attempted to be taken from us because we are female presenting people. And magic is a way that you can start to bring that power back into your life. Overall, I liked the video. I think it was cute. I think it was very aesthetically pleasing, and I like the messages that the video presented. So if you'd like to see me do more reaction videos, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you have any videos you want me to react to, let me know in the comments below. Um, you know I like to give my opinion on things, whether it's controversial or not. Um, yeah, that was fun. I've thought about doing the reaction to the BuzzFeed video. Um, and then Jacqueline Glenn's video, or I would do Jacqueline Glenn's video first because that was the first one and they're basically the same freaking video. But anyways, but th those videos are kind of old at this point and they have been reacted to. So yeah, let me know if you like this sort of thing and if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>